Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily show on Facebook on photography. Every weekday at 9.30 at photojoseph.com at facebook.com slash photojoseph. Greetings. So today's topic is about crop factors. This is one of those topics that, that you hear, you hear the word crop factor a lot and you hear 35 millimeter equivalent. And if you don't really know what it is, it can just be this kind of confusing mumbly jumbly that techie photo geeks talk about, especially when they're talking about specs on camera. And then you go, that's nice. What does it mean? So that's what we're here to try and clarify today. Exactly what a crop factor is, why it matters, what relevance it has to your camera and so on and so on. So let's, let's just start with the easy part. Let's just throw away the mumbo jumbo and say this, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter from the perspective of I have a camera in my hands and it makes beautiful pictures. That's the end of that discussion. That, that, that's all that matters, right? If you're an enthusiast and you just like making pictures and you've got a camera that you like and it makes good pictures, who cares what the crop factor is? Whether it's a crop factor of one or a crop factor of a thousand, it doesn't exist, but it, it doesn't matter. So don't worry about it, I think is what I'm ultimately saying there. When it comes to crop factor, don't worry about it. But sometimes you want to know, and there are times where it is relevant. So let's just talk about what it is and how to figure it out. So first of all, the whole idea behind crop factor is because as photographers, as photography evolved, the most common format was 35 millimeter film. And oh, you know, I just had negatives in here and I put them, got rid of them, darn it. Anyway, a negative is about yay big. And this is your standard. When you went out and bought 35 millimeter film, this is the thing that you stuck in your camera and you took pictures with. And this is what pretty much everybody was used to. This is the idea of a film camera. It shoots on 35 millimeter negatives. Now there are bigger negatives. There are smaller negatives. 110 was one of the little ones, 2, 220. God, brain is escaping me. Medium format film, large format film, and so on. But 35 millimeter was kind of the standard. That's what Kodak made bajillions of, that's what you could buy in any grocery store, that was the standard. So this is what everybody came to know as film. Now the cameras that shot on those, uh, that shot that film, standard 35 millimeter cameras became of course equally as common. You'd go out and you'd buy a Canon, a Nikon, a Minolta, a Pentax, whatever it was, a SLR, not DSLR, but an SLR, single lens reflex camera, you pop it in a 35 millimeter film and take pictures. And you take those pictures to the drugstore, get them developed, and that's all you needed to know. When you bought one of those cameras and you put a lens on it, you chose a lens, the standard kind of default lens was usually a 50 millimeter lens. 50 millimeter is pretty close to what you see with the naked eye. So if you were to hold up a camera with a 50 millimeter lens, look through it with one eye, keep the other eye open, everything should pretty much line up and be, be almost exactly the same size. So this idea behind the 50 millimeter being your standard, uh, the term nifty 50 came out of there. It's just a very standard, common, easy to use focal length. You have wider lenses like 35 that were also very popular, longer lenses like uh, 60 or 80 or 100 that became quite popular, but that 50 was just like really standard. Okay. So anyway, so the, the idea is that we as photographers, we as a populace got used to this idea of what a 50 millimeter lens looks like. In our head, we know what a 50 millimeter lens should look like. We know what a 35. A 35 millimeter is a little bit wider than normal. A 24 millimeter lens, that's pretty wide. A 100 millimeter lens, that's getting pretty long. A 300, that's like really telephoto. And these are ideas that we have in our head that are attached to numbers. Now, those numbers suddenly changed when we went digital because the sensor size changed. The initial, the original sensor sizes were, were really small, way smaller than 35 millimeter film. And over time they got bigger. And then you had really big ones, kind of uh, like four by five equivalent type things. And they were actually scan sensors as a whole different ball game. But digital sensors evolved over time and got bigger and some got smaller. And they became just as standard as 35 millimeter film was back in the day, even more so, right? I mean, there's digital cameras everywhere. But the sensor size, as that changes, as that gets bigger or smaller, the what you get out of an, a focal length lens, a 50 millimeter lens also changes. And this is where crop factor comes in. So if you've got a 35 millimeter film camera and you put a 50 millimeter lens on it, as we already know, we talked about, it's roughly real world. That's what you see. If you put a smaller sensor in there, suddenly you have a crop factor and that 50 millimeter lens no longer acts like a 50 millimeter. It now looks like something else. And what that something else is, is calculated via the crop factor. 
So that's the premise of it. So to make the numbers easy, if you were to take a 35, let's just pretend this is 35 millimeter sensor or film, 35 millimeter film, and you made a digital sensor that is exactly the same size, that same 50 millimeter lens is going to look the same on digital or on film because the sensor is the same as the film was. This is what is known as a full frame sensor. It is using the it is using a frame that is the equivalent to 35 millimeter film. It doesn't really matter. I mean, there are lots of reasons that it's important, but there doesn't really matter as far as the fact that you can take a picture. You have a sensor that is this size, it is the same as what 35 millimeter film was. Because we're so used to 35 millimeter film, we start calling this full frame. Okay, so now you've, you've got this term full frame in mind, and you'll hear a lot of people, a lot of sensor snobs talk about how oh, full frame is where it's at. If it's not full frame, it's rubbish. And I have to admit, I used to be that way as well. Uh, back when digital first started, and well, not first started, but back when I got into digital, full frame was kind of the holy grail. And it was very, it was important. It was more important then than it is now because smaller sensors really weren't as good. Nowadays, we have smaller sensors that are phenomenal, but if you're a sensor snob, you would say, oh, full frame or nothing else. Now, the irony of that, the funny thing about that is then you've got medium format photographers shooting with sensors that are way bigger than 35 millimeter. We're looking down going, uh, excuse me, <laughs> my camera is way better than that. What do you mean? That's the thing. So there's always that comparison, but let's, let's forget about medium format for now. So 35 millimeter film equals full frame sensor. Okay, so now why does a smaller sensor change things? Why does it have this crop? Again, let's make the numbers easy. Let's just cut this in half, half the height, half the uh, width. So now you've got something that is one quarter the area, right? It's one quarter the area, but it's half the dimensions. So if you were to look at, let's, let's pretend my phone is the 35 millimeter sensor. If you were to look at just a portion of this, you got the same lens projecting the same image onto this space. Now you're cutting out a piece of that. You are essentially cropping air quotes, cropping into the image, cropping into the lens. You are using a smaller piece of the image that the lens is projecting onto the film plane. Interesting, right? So if you think about a camera like Canon, Canon makes, right? You got Canon cameras. You've got a full frame camera like this um, 5D Mark something or other. So you got a full frame camera and then you can buy what are called APS-C sensor cameras, smaller sensors. And we'll, we'll get into the numbers in a bit smaller sensor cameras from the same manufacturer, you can take the exact same lens and put it on there and suddenly that lens changes. So if you had a 50 millimeter lens on your Canon full frame camera and you look through it and you see 50 millimeter, you then take that and put it onto a smaller frame camera and you're seeing a zoomed in image, a cropped image. You're seeing less uh, than what you were seeing through here. So now there's the crop factor. So again, just to recap that, you've got your full frame size sensor. You've got a lens that's projecting an image onto here. When you crop factor, when you use a, a smaller sensor with a crop factor, you are using a portion of that. It might be 50% of it. It might be 80% of it. It might be any number of sizes depending on the sensor, but that's where this comes in from. Okay. So now, now that you understand, hopefully, and for those watching live, if any of this doesn't make sense, tell me in the comments, I will happily elaborate more. When you're cropping into that, what, what is that crop factor? How do you calculate that? Okay, so now there's a bunch of different types of sensors on the market. I did a quick little Google this morning and I found, um, oh good, that's not working. I found a web page that I'll show you as soon as this thing wakes up uh, that has a nice map of different sensor sizes. And so that, and that gives you the crop sensor, um, uh, the crop ratio. If my switcher decides to wake up, there it goes. Okay, and let's go to my iPad. Here it is. Okay, this is on a website called Smashing Camera. I hope they're not smashing too many cameras. And I'll put this link to this article in the show notes. Um, but this is a DSLR camera sensor size and crop factor guide. And if you scroll down, you'll see this lovely image here with a list of different crop factors underneath it. So ignore the picture for now. Let's just look at the text. Full frame, no crop, entire image. So that is Canon full frame and Nikon FX. It's just, just some examples on there. Then it says APS dash H, which is something I'm not really that familiar with. I haven't come across too many of these, uh, which has a 1.3 crop factor. APS-C, which is very common, very, very common, has a 1.5 crop factor on Nikon cameras. And then it has a 1.6 crop factor on Canon APS-C cameras. So very, very close, but not identical. So 
why well, why the difference in the two APS-Cs has got to have to do with just, I don't know, the framing, the setup of the, the uh, sensor in the camera. I don't really know why that's ever so slightly different, but it is the same sensor. Most of these camera manufacturers um, are buying the sensors from the same people anyway. Uh, Sony makes the sensors for vast majority of cameras out there. Anyway, so APS-C is a 1.5 or 1.6x crop versus full frame, which has, oops, has no crop. So let's take a look at the picture now. I'm trying to get this text off the screen. So if you look at this picture, the outer edge is the full frame image. The red and green lines are your 1.5 and 1.6x crop. So that's what we were just talking about. That's that little crop factor. That's where it comes into play. And then if you look down farther, it says, uh, not on the image, but the very bottom one, four thirds sensor, so micro four thirds, that's what you're, uh, that's what I'm shooting with with my Lumix cameras, has a 2x crop factor. So that makes it nice, nice and easy. It's just a factor of two. Okay, so now that we know that, um, where's my camera? Here we go. Now that we know that, how do we do the math? What does that math actually add up to? So a 50 millimeter lens, so we'll go back to our nifty 50, a 50 millimeter lens on a micro four thirds camera is the equivalent of a 100 millimeter, so 2x factor, 50 times two, 100 millimeter lens. So if you take something that says 50 on it and you put it on a micro four thirds camera, it is going to look like a 100 millimeter lens would on a full frame camera. Great. So the, and then the math on the other one, 1.5. So if you've got to if, use the 1.5 because it's easy. If you've got a Nikon was a DX camera and you got a 50 millimeter lens, it's going to look like a 75 millimeter wood. Now going back to cameras like Canon and Nikon who make both full frame and non full frame cameras, if you, you can, t where you can take that exact same lens, you suddenly have a lot more lens than you need to deliver that image, right? So if I've got, if I buy a, a lens, well, let's, let's just stick with this one since this is what I have now. This is a 24 to 70 millimeter full frame Canon lens. It's a monster, 24 to 70. So that's going to be 24 to 70. If I put this on a Canon APS-C sensor camera with a 1.6 crop factor, let's do the math real quick here. Um, this would be, so 24 is the wide, right? 24 times 1.6 equals 38.4. So call it 38 millimeter to, let's say 70, 70 times 1.6 is 112. So 34 to 112 millimeter equivalent zoom. But the lens should be delivering 24 to 70 because that's what it's built for. So now I've got all this extra glass that's not being used. Because remember, we're talking about projecting onto my sensor here all this glass projecting on, we're not using it. So we don't really need that much glass. There's the convenience factor of if you buy into something like Canon or Nikon, where you can buy full frame lenses and non full frame bodies, put them together and they work perfectly well. What you get though out of it is different than what it says on the box, right? It's not what it says here. Or you can buy lenses that are designed for crop sensors. And on, I don't know how it is on Nikon, but on Canon, so this Canon camera, this Canon lens, see it's got a little red dot on here. The red dot tells me that it is a full frame. If this was a cropped frame lens, a lens designed for crop frame cameras, it would have a white dot on it. Now the white dot and red dot lenses work on the cropped cameras. Only the red dot lenses will work on the full frame cameras. Because essentially what would happen is if you were to put, and I don't think you even can, I think physically it won't fit, but if you were to put a white dot lens on a full frame camera, it would only be putting the image, turn that off again, it would only be putting the image onto part of that sensor, not on the full sensor. And then you wouldn't have, you'd have like dark rings around it that wouldn't obviously look good. So you, I think you physically can't connect them. I think it blocks you from doing that. So then now let's look at this whole idea of the lenses that are built for those cameras. Enter things like the micro four thirds. So here's my GH4. This is a 24 to 70 F 2.8 micro four thirds lens. This is a 24 to 70 F 2.8 Canon full frame lens half the sensor size, probably half the weight and volume. I mean, I think mean less than half the weight. I should get scales and stuff, have some fun with it. But it is massively, massively different for the same focal length and the same aperture. Interesting, yeah? Now, crop factor is important because knowing what the numbers on the lens do. This lens says 12 to 35 on it. It doesn't say 24 to 70. It says 12 to 35 because it is the equivalent of 24 to 70. Remember 2x on this. You will usually see on a lens what the actual focal length is. This number means something for real and we can get into that another day if you guys are interested. But this number does mean something for real. So if I was to somehow manage to put this onto a Canon camera, Look, it almost fits. Um, it would, 
it would, like I said earlier, you'd have a big dark ring or block boxing around the edge or something. You wouldn't be able to see the whole thing. You wouldn't get the full 12 to 35 out of it. I mean, it just wouldn't look right. But, um, but you can't. So again, the advantage of the smaller sensor is you get smaller gear as well. So what are disadvantages of the smaller sensors? A very good question. I'm glad you asked. The, there's two primary differences. In general, the bigger the sensor, the better. That's just physics, and you can't argue with physics. If you have a 10 megapixel camera, 10 million, 20 megapixels, let's do that, 20 million pixels, and you cram those 20 million pixels onto a sensor that is teeny, teeny, tiny, that's in your iPhone, and then you take a huge sensor, let's say medium format, let's just pretend like a medium format is kind of physically about this big, not quite, but kind of, I mean, it's, it's big. And you put the same 20 million pixels on here, what does that mean for the pixels? It means they get to be bigger, right? Every pixel gets to be bigger. Bigger pixels means be better light gathering uh, capability, lower noise, overall better image quality, which is why if you take, if you, as you go up from a sensor that's in an iPhone, to micro four thirds, to full frame, to medium format, there is a notable difference in image quality. Now that said, a huge amount of work has been done in the micro four thirds space, which as you know, I shoot, to make the sensor quality as good as. And it's not, again, you can't argue with physics. There are advantages to a bigger frame that you just, a uh, bigger sensor size that you just can't get around. But between the Technologies in the, the cameras, the computers that are in there, the processing that is done to the images, a lot of the drawbacks have gone away or at least have been minimized to the point where for the vast majority of users, you can't tell the difference or the difference doesn't matter. It's the same thing down to the iPhone. The iPhone sensor is so tiny, it should be crap, right? This should actually be a crap image, but it's not. It's a phenomenally good image because the computing power that's in here does amazing things to the image before it's delivered to you, before it's shown on screen. That's pretty slick. So same type of tech is in these. To some degree, it's in these. And then when you get into the bigger sensors, there's a lot less of that tech going on because it's just a big fat sensor capturing raw data and it's a beautiful thing. Okay, I think that kind of wraps that up. I think it kind of explains it. Um, a few people watching live, if any of this, if you have questions about any of this, please throw them out while you can. If you're watching this later on YouTube, then obviously you can put the questions in the comments. Um, but that is effectively the difference between full frame and non-full frame where that comes from and why the crop factor is there. So the crop factor has to do with the size of the actual sensor. There's math between the size of the actual sensor and what a full frame sensor would be. Again, it is ultimately irrelevant because there's always bigger, there's always smaller. But if you want to do the math to understand what the numbers on your lens mean and why a 50 millimeter on one camera looks different than a 50 millimeter on another, that is why. That explains it. So. Uh, I'm seeing no questions coming in, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this guy up. Quick little reminder on a couple of things. Um, my workshop, do I have my work? I don't even know what image is up there, so I'm not going to bring it up. But my workshop coming up in Oaxaca, Mexico in uh, January of this year. We still have seats available. Would love to fill it up. Go to photojoseph.com slash workshops to check that out. And on um, for this thing, the Photo Moments, if you want to help support Photo Moments, I have added a $1 tier, which is like nothing $1 a month, but I am... Wasn't getting a whole lot of action on the on the um, Patreon site as it was, so I figured I'd throw in the dollar in there and see if more people are willing to pick, pitch in a buck a month. Hey, if I had 10,000 of you pitching in a buck a month, um, I could actually make a living doing this. That'd be awesome. Uh, but go to, as the URL is down here somewhere, down there, there it is, patreon.com slash photojoseph. And uh, if you're enjoying these things, if you learn something, it's got to be worth a buck, right? And hopefully more than that. So there's stages on there. You can go check it out. Please contribute. Keep this show on the air because I can't do this forever off of the minuscule ad revenue that I get out of YouTube. All right, guys, that's it. I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope this is interesting. hope it was educational. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.